Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. During the last 6 months Dice Los Angeles has spent a lot of time and energy to get the so-called netcode into a state where we can just enjoy the game. A lot of new functions were added and the existing code has been optimized and reworked. So when I play Battlefield 4 on the PC today then it is very clear that their work did have a very positive effect on the game. It is still not perfect though, I still die very strange deaths from time to time and the collecting of damage is also a problem, but that is something they are working on. The bottom line is that most of the time I can enjoy playing the game, much more than 6 months ago before we had all these changes. So luckily Dysole did not stop after what they did during the first few months in the community test environment. They are still working on fixing and improving the netcode. And recently we did get quite an update for that in the CTE, which should further improve your experience. But these changes are not that easy to understand when you read about them. Added a high frequency cone. That sounds interesting when you read it in the changelog, but it is not something that you can easily picture in your head. So last week I had the chance to chat with one of the developers who is actively working on these netcode changes. And I asked him a lot of questions as you can surely imagine. After this very nice conversation I got a pretty good idea of how the netcode is working now in the CTE. And since these changes will sooner than later be a part of a patch for the public version of Battlefield 4, I decided to make this video here, where I explain in detail how the netcode is working now. So I'd say that we first refresh our memory a little bit by having a look at the basics first. The server and your client, which can be a PC or a console, communicate with each other. This communication is done in intervals and these are different for sending and receiving data or updates as these are called. So your client is sending 30 updates per second to the server, which is a fixed value that cannot be changed. Receiving updates from the server however happens at a much lower rate, only 10 times per second. That is one update every 100 milliseconds. In layman's terms this means that your client sees the other players as if it would watch a video that is played at 10 frames per second, which means that is more like a slideshow than a smooth animation. The client then fills in the gaps between the updates it receives, it tries to predict what the other players do and that is why we have smooth player movement on our screen. The problem with receiving an update only 10 times per second is that what you see on your screen is already quite old and especially in close quarters combat this can lead to highly frustrating moments like the damage around cover. Because on the screen of the player who shot you, you were not behind cover yet. But also long distance firefights are not much fun when you try to hit a moving target because he might no longer be where you see him. The other issue is that if you receive only 10 updates per second, then every weapon which has a rate of fire above 600 fires faster than the game can be updated. So there are less updates than rounds that are fired, which will lead to the problem that in one update or frame you receive the damage of more than just one fired round and this is very frustrating when it happens. So Dysalay introduced a high frequency network update in Battlefield 4 to fix the issues that are caused by the 10Hz update rate. With this feature the game can now receive updates 10, 15, 20 or 30 times per second. Based on your internet connection the game will decide which rate it can use and you can check which rate is currently used by looking at the network performance overlay. If you see a 30 there, then the highest possible rate at which you can receive updates is 30 times per second. If it is a 20, then it is 20 updates per second and so on. You will however always send data 30 times per second. This is a fixed value and cannot be changed. So now that we have refreshed our memory, let's have a look at where that high frequency update rate is active, because that has recently changed in the community test environment. So here we have an US Recon. In front of him there's a high frequency update area in the shape of a hemisphere, which extends 40 meters away from the player. On top of that we have an high frequency network update cone, which stretches out in the direction the Recon looks. If there would be someone from the enemy team inside the green area, then the Recon will receive updates for this player's position and orientation at the highest possible rate. And which rate that is can be checked with the network performance overlay. In this case here it's 30 Hz, so he gets 30 updates per second for what that player is doing. Now inside this cone there are different update rates active. 
Up to 100 meters the cone uses the highest possible rate to update us with the position and orientation data of the enemy player. After this 100 meters there is a linear fall off, which decreases the update rate. And at 300 meters the cone ends, which means that past this distance, as well as outside the cone and the hemisphere, we receive only 10 updates per second for the enemy player's position and orientation. So this will really help a lot with long distance firefights, but the developers didn't stop there. When you aim down your sight, then you have surely noticed that your field of view is decreased, which means that you see less to the left and to the right, and you are more focused on what happens at the distance. This has been used to extend the length of this cone. So when you aim down your sight, then up to 100 meters it will use the highest possible rate to update you with the enemy player's orientation and position, but it won't end at 300 meters. It will extend past that mark, but I can't tell you the exact value because the scaling is done by a factor, which as far as I understood is tied to the field of view value. So this might be a little bit different for every player, depending on which field of view setting you have configured in the game. So that sounds all nice and great in theory, but does this really work? To find out, I did some tests in which I measured the delay for player's orientation and position updates at distances of 125 meters and 225 meters. At a distance of 125 meters, I have to wait 216 milliseconds in Battlefield 4 until I see what the player does at that distance. If you repeat this test in the CTE while aiming down sight, then this delay is reduced to 149 milliseconds. That's a reduction of 32% thanks to the high frequency update cone. But at 225 meters it starts to become really interesting. In Battlefield 4 I have to wait 300 milliseconds until I get an update for what that player is doing. And in the CTE the delay has been brought down to 150 milliseconds. That is faster than what you get in Battlefield 4 at 125 meters. So the high frequency network update cone is definitely working. This means that long distance firefights should be much more enjoyable now, because what you see is now much more accurate and up to date. So these are the high frequency network update areas for the infantry, inside which you receive updates for the player position and orientation of the enemy team at the highest possible rate. The reason why I repeated this so many times now is that this only affects the enemy team. Player orientation and position for your team members is not updated more frequently. For them you receive updates 10 times per second, no matter if they are inside or outside of these areas. But that's not really an issue, because usually you are not in a firefight with your teammates. So until now I've only been talking about the update of player orientation and position, but what happens when someone is shooting at me? At which rate do I receive that damage then, and how do these high frequency network update areas affect the rate at which I receive the damage? The rate at which I receive damage is not affected by these high frequency network update areas. It does not matter if that player who is shooting at me is inside that area or outside. I will always receive that damage at the highest possible rate, no matter where he is located on the map. So if there is a player 150 meters to my right and he manages to hit me with the first 4 fired rounds out of his assault rifle, then I will receive this damage at the highest possible rate which in my case is 30 Hz. Now before we have a look at how much bandwidth is required to play Battlefield 4 at 30 Hz, we will have a look at the high frequency update changes that were made for vehicles. So here we have a tank and in front of him we now have a hemisphere which extends 20 meters and an additional hemisphere is behind it which extends 10 meters. The reason why there is this second hemisphere is to provide a better collision check. On top of these areas we have the same cone the infantry has, and since you can't aim down sight in a tank, the zoom optics will make the cone change like it does when you aim down sight as an infantry player. So you still have that functionality there, you only need to use the zoom optics. Now how about the bandwidth requirements for Battlefield 4 when using an update rate of 30Hz? To test this I played 2 hours on a full 64 player public server with 30Hz and locked the UDP and TCP traffic between the Battlefield 4 process and the server. After these 2 hours the download was at an average of 16 kilobyte per second 
and I had spikes of up to 20.29 kilobytes per second. The upload was at an average of 4 kilobytes per second with spikes of 5.4 kilobytes per second. Then I played 2 hours on a full 64 player server in the CTE, also with 30 Hz. And there the download was at an average of 11 kilobytes per second. And spikes were up to 14 kilobytes per second. The upload was at an average of 2.7 kilobytes per second and the spikes I had were up to 4.44 kilobytes per second. So there's a very clear reduction in the bandwidth that is required to play Battlefield 4 at the currently highest possible rates of 30 Hz. And this will surely make a lot of people happy who have stable internet connections but don't have high bandwidth or have traffic limits. But maybe this will also open the door a little bit wider to have update rates that are higher than 30 Hz. I hope that one day this will be possible. So these are the changes that DiceLA made to the netcode of Battlefield 4 in the CTE, which should soon be included in a patch for the public version. If you are playing on one of the last gen consoles, then you can also look forward to these changes, because the developers ensured me that these will come to all platforms. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I could help you to get a better understanding of how the netcode is working. So if you did, then give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.